For the majority of you, if I say the name GMTN, it's a name that you might recognize, but know nothing about. GMTN, who's actually pronounced Gumtune, is regarded as one of the top tier musicians to come from rhythm games. But there's seemingly almost no record of him on the internet, because in 2013, he suddenly vanished for a while, taking all of his music with him until he returned again in 2015, only to retire for good in 2021. As a result of this turbulence, there's no definitive way to find Gumtune's music, let alone anything about Gumtune himself. And to someone who isn't already in the BMS community, the most you'll likely see are some tracks randomly scattered across the internet. Some tracks are hidden in obscurity, whilst others have gone on to become classics within rhythm game history. Now, Gumtune isn't completely gone. Today, he still maintains a low profile online on sites like Twitter, and he still continues to play rhythm games, but this is still an artist who seems to be shrouded in complete mystery. Not to mention that Gumtune himself has said that despite occasionally reviving himself to create a song, his composition status is still effectively retired. And so, today, I hope to lift that veil of mystery and create what I guess you could call a tribute to the one who bears the mark of the witch. It all started back in about 2007, around the time Gumtoon was a high school student. Gumtoon was a teen who was very interested in computers, particularly programming and video games. But one of the main things he enjoyed as a hobby was of course, rhythm games. In particular, he mentioned playing DDR and playing DJ Max Portable on the now ancient PSP. <sighs> How time flies. Sooner or later, Gumtoon would fall into the dance simulator rabbit hole, that is, Step Mania. Presumably because he was looking for a way to be able to practice DDR without spending a fortune. And some of the oldest posts from him are of him posting scores from some of his Step Mania sessions. From all this experience stemmed a spark of inspiration. He began to look into what happens behind the scenes of a rhythm game. You know, charting, background arts and music. He wanted to be able to give back to the community in some way, but he wasn't going to be able to do it by himself, since although he was experienced playing, he had no experience elsewhere. So instead of trying to tackle things alone, he decided to look around for any kind of open positions for some voluntary work. And after looking for a bit, he came across a certain team that had a couple. A team that may sound familiar if you were really into Step Mania back in the day. Team Panzer Force was recruited. If you don't know who these guys are, Team Panzer Force were a group of people who became known in 2005 for their Step Mini Panzer Force packs, which were pad packs using various existing songs or even remixes of popular songs in rhythm games, or completely original ones made by the team, led by the esteemed DJ Extros. It started off relatively small for their first few pack releases, but whilst working on their fourth release, which was the Panzer Force third mix, they wanted to make their packs on a much larger scale, so they began to recruit new volunteer staff to help out. According to Panzer Force's log, that specific recruitment period happened sometime between the 1st of January and the 30th of August of 2007, and among the people recruited was Gumtoon as a rookie composer and a graphics designer. There was a total of 8 people on the team now, including himself and DJ Extros, and all of them then got to work to prepare for the Panzer Force third mix. Bearing in mind that before this point, it's unknown what Gumtoon's experience with music is besides him taking piano lessons at school. Gumtoon was from there talks with the objective of rebuilding a track from the DDR Ultra Mix 2 song pack number 11. Yeah, they say rebuild, but Gumtoon made it sound so different that it can effectively be called a remix. The song was Guilty by DJ Setup, and Gumtoon rebuilt and recharted the song from the ground up to create Guilty, the Divine Judgment Mix. As what's Gumtoon's earliest known track, it's about what you'd expect. It's pretty basic sounding and generally unremarkable, but given the original song he had to work with was also pretty basic, for all intents and purposes, he did a great job to create a fairly engaging song and challenging charts to boot. I found while playing it that the freeze hours were really creative and brought my enjoyment factor up by a lot. Gumtoon would then go on to retain his position at Panzer Force for the next pack they released in 2008, the fourth mix. And in the fourth mix, this is where Gumtoon would compose his first original tracks. Here, he created two songs. One of them was a collab with DJ Deplorer, another fellow member of Team Panzer Force, and this saw the creation of Boisterous Siren, which, based on the name, is exactly what you'd expect. The lead melody is repetitive and can easily be mistaken for a ringtone, with the hardcore kicks complementing the feeling of chaos you'd get from an actual siren going off. The song is a marginal improvement from before, and again, the chart is made very well to bring out aspects of the song you otherwise wouldn't have appreciated. Then we had Gumtoon's first actual original track. No help or collabs involved. I guess for all intents and purposes, this was technically Gumtoon's first track, and it definitely has a much different feel to it now that Gumtoon was on his own. This song was Script Core S. 
With a song like this, it was clear from the beginning the style Gum Team would end up adopting. The insanely heavy hardcore kicks, distorted voice samples, and how developed the melody is, is the signature Gum Tune style, and is one that you're very familiar with already if you're watching this video. We haven't seen a huge amount from him so far, but it's clear that Gum Tune had a bias towards hardcore, and was trying to find his own sound from that, and these tracks were a good starting point for the journey that he would end up taking. 2009 then crept up, and for a little while, Gum Tune was on a break from composing, when suddenly, Panzer Force approached Gum Tune with a proposal. He was invited as one of the composers to represent Team Pantavos in the biggest annual BMS event, the BMS of Writers 2009. Essentially, Pantaforce made their debut in the BMS scene last year in the BMS of Writers 2008 Resurrection. This was a pretty big deal because they weren't just representing Pantaforce, they were representing the Step Mania scene as a whole. This was of course the first BMS contest though, not to mention only three members were in the team. DJ Extros and the Xenophium for BMS composition, and Koa Venet for BGA. So not only were impressions few and far between due to being relatively unpopular, but there was a lot of work between only 3 people, and by the end of the contest, they placed 48th out of 53 teams. Ouch. But there's always next time. And this is where Gumtune comes in. They were hoping to bring him on board as a new BMS composer to not only show off his clear potential, but also even out the workload. This news came in early 2009 however, and before this, Gumtune had no experience with creating BMS, so he'd have to prepare, lest he be smitten by not knowing what the hell's going on. So, he got to work. Since he already had experience with composing, the main challenge was figuring out how to actually charge the BMS. But once he got the hang of it, he created another hardcore song that you can tell he had a lot of fun composing. One that, on his official website, he called a hardcore named breakcore, Poison Cobweb. Hilarious, honestly. And towards the end, it has a really fun progression to hit. Pretty cool that he also took into account Climax Fury and applied it to both the song and the charts. Yes, that's a real thing. He also created several new BMS songs leading up to the BMS of Fighters 2009, with this being Shiawa Seina Ayatsuri Ningyo, Bear Transmix, which for some reason was suspended from release, but this will be significant later, so hold on to that. He also created Cross Dagger, a techno song featuring a lot of record scratching, and Bullshit Delta, a song that simply has the notes. As the song name suggests, the BPM will not be available. Can you guess what this song takes inspiration from? Well, it's definitely a song. The chart also looks really easy for a song that's this fast. I would have expected the chart to be a bit more representative of the high BPM, but it is what it is. On top of these works, by August of 2009, Panzerforce were creating a compilation of some of the most iconic songs from their history, along with some teasers of stuff upcoming in the future fifth mix, dubbing it the Statmania Panzerforce original soundtrack. The soundtrack included all of the composers from Panzerforce, DJ Deplorer, DJ Phantom, Takumi, Exos, Xenophium, and Gumtune. For this, Gumtune would create the Poison Cobweb original extended 09 mix, which extended the original song from about 2 minutes to 6 minutes and 33 seconds. God damn. A cool addition to this was a voice sample right at the beginning that seems indiscernible at first, but actually says the following. This released on the 15th of August that year, under the Dojin music label Stoic Sounds, which they've shown to be heavily affiliated with in some of their past work, and was actually partially ran by DJ Extros at the time. It's also worth noting that this album is one of Panzer Force's most popular works within the community. It's therefore easy to make the mistake of thinking that the song in here was Gumtune's first track, but obviously this isn't the case. After all this, it seemed like Gumtune and his team was ready, and before long, the BMS of Fighters 2009 begun. Representing Team Panzer Force was the same crew as 2008's one, with the only addition being Gumtune, and of that, three songs from each composer was produced, with Koa Venet's helping for background art. First, we had DJ Exos' song, which has since been removed from records. In fact, DJ Exos' work in some earlier BMS events have been completely erased for unknown reasons, and out of respect for his decision, uh, we won't dig any deeper than that. We can be sure that his song still had a huge part in the team's final placing, however, as it gained 34,500 points by the end of the event. Next was Xenophium's Spiral Beauty Salon, an intense song that's meant to be a fusion of Arabic-style music and hardcore. Besides the fact that you can barely hear the actual hardcore kicks, you can see the effort made to create an intense melody and atmosphere, and one that slowly builds up throughout the song's progression. And of course we had Gumtune's song, a song very reminiscent of your generic space trance song called Cell.
not a bad song of course. This was actually pretty surprising considering we've only seen hardcore from Gumtune so far. And it was clear that Gumtune was now properly exploring his options and experimenting. But the song was nothing out of the ordinary either. And because of that, and the problem stemmed from the BMS chart cutting halfway, impressions were generally pretty mixed. So much so that a very high proportion of the impressions had the Japanese word Oh Michi included in some way, literally meaning Royal Road. But in this context is a way to describe works that have taken the easy way out. Cell was a great debut for his BMS career, but as Gumtune also hinted some of his responses, it was clear that if he wanted to turn heads, he would have to push himself and his sound out of his comfort zone. That however, is easier said than done. Either way, out of the gate, Gumtune maintained an average of around 730 points, and the rest of Team Panzer Force closely followed, with the highest achiever being Xenophim's Spiral Beauty Salon, with 820 points average across 56 impressions. After the event ended, the team accumulated a total of 115k points, which was enough to place them at a solid 31st out of 70. This is a big improvement from last year, and whilst it was partly because each member improved in their own right after that year, it was mainly because of Gumtune's addition that they were able to work effectively and make some decent BMS. Panzer Force took the W and retreated back to the lands of Stepmania to prepare for yet another Panzer Force mix, the fifth one I was talking about from earlier. This one was probably going to be their biggest project yet, starting development on the 1st of September. But Panzer Force was a pretty small team, and a big portion of their team was dealing with participating in one of the biggest events of the year. Naturally, there was going to be some issues with development, and at some point, there was even a recruitment announcement put up, saying they were looking for more stuff that could deal with step and image production. This caused the project to be significantly delayed and what was supposed to have been released in early 2010 didn't see the light of day until late 2011. However, it can be confirmed through Windows's nifty date modified property that the date Gumtune finished composition for this pack was in January of 2010, so technically this is the next event on the timeline. I guess just pretend it hasn't been released yet. Essentially, Fifth Mix is meant to be the ultimate crossover pack across all the Panzer Force mixes and rhythm games in general, containing a lot more existing songs, remixes and a bunch more originals from members of Panzer Force at the time. And I mean, a lot. Seriously. For work of this size and quality to be what I consider very far under the radar is positively insane. And it generally shocked me seeing this for the first time. But I digress. Among these was Poison Cobweb again by Gumtune. Adopted and slightly remixed to be charted in Step Mania. We also had a song that was again more on the trance side. Using a much slower pace than usual and a violin lead instead. Again, it's apparent that Gum Team was exploring different sounds and experimenting with other options. The song that marked this was Snowfalls in the Night City. His songs were now starting to move from what sounded pretty basic to things that sounded pretty solid, on top of some proven versatility and incredibly strong melodies. And in terms of finding his own sound, it certainly wouldn't end here. A little while later, in April, Gumtune would release a brand new BMS onto his website and his Nico, simply called Shiawase na Maria Bea Transmix. Sound familiar? This has almost the exact same title as Shiawase na Ayatsuri Ningyo from earlier. Even though this one didn't end up being released, the description is still intact, saying, For the time being, this is the song Umi Neko. Umi Neko. A visual novel that many claim is among the best pieces of literature ever written, spanning more than 100 hours of gameplay twists, mystery, and deep storytelling. Allegedly. One of the reasons why Umineko is so popular is because of how well done the soundtrack to it is, since it captures the atmosphere of each moment beautifully. And this Happy Puppet song is a remix of one of the tracks from Umineko, which one it was is a mystery that will never be solved. But this trend returns again a year later for the Happy Maria track, with it being a direct remix of the track Happy Maria from the visual novel. With this one, this is back to Gumtune's classic hardcore style, but with a bit of a difference. You'll notice that the lead on this is unlike what we've heard before. Instead of using a classic synth, Gumtune takes heavy influence off of Baroque music, using what sounds like a bell tree and a lot of harpsichords to create what feels almost medieval and fantastical in nature. With these elements, despite it being combined with hardcore, it still gives off a very witchy aura. This is the sort of thing I'd expect to hear when like caster is being introduced or something. And this does make sense considering witches are a significant part of Umineko, whether they're real or not. Huh. Anyways, as a result of the themes of the song, this track represents a significant progression for Gumtune's sound, one that many of you know him for and recognize actually. 
because it's in this song that the witch's slave is born. This originally started as a way for a gum tune to go under a new name when creating Umineko arrangement, and it's actually unknown how this name was created and if it's a direct reference to anything specific in Umineko. The best I can think of is the way Basil is treated by Beatrice, who's known as a golden witch in some areas of the novel just like a slave, but only God and Gumtu knows. Anyways, this only has just under 4k views on this Nico to this day. You can imagine that this wasn't something that people would pick up on until much later down the line. But this, right here, was the definitive Gumtune sound that would be used as a bass plate for the majority of the songs. For now though, Gumtune would continue his usual path, with another BMS event happening concurrently that was actually ran by DJ Extras, despite all the hardships Panzer Force was facing. Remember how I said Gumtune played a lot of DJ Max Portable? Well, this event lined up directly with that hobby, because this was specifically dubbed as the DJ Max Remix event, or in other words, the Over Velocity Arrangement event. He had to remix any song from DJ Max, with the only caveat being it had to be from this list of games, and he had to make the best BMS he can. The event was surprisingly popular, and it even had some pretty notable artists participating in it, like Nora2R and Scytheleg. On top of this, all of Panzer Force's BMS specialists were paired against each other, with Gumtune, Xenophium, and DJ Extras making a remix. Yeah. DJ Extras made a remix despite the fact that, again, he's running an event and in charge of a whole other project. Does this man not rest? For the contest, Gumtune opted to go for a classic that comes from the very first DJ Max installment, DJ Max Online. This was a very fast paced breakbeat song that many considered to be a bit of an awkward one to play because of its charting, but it's still a fan favourite among early DJ Max fans, and Gumtune did this the justice it deserves by giving it a new mix. The Aggressive HC Mix. essentially took the original song and completely remastered and extended it, whilst maintaining that same level of intensity from the original, if not more. It felt much more like a complete song rather than just a track from a rhythm game this time, and it showed in the impressions that it was a high quality remix. As a result, by the end of the event, Gumtoon was just shy of a podium spot, missing 3rd place by only 3 points, a company 4th place is not bad regardless. Then, after a couple more BMS releases, it was time again for the BMS of Fighters. The original Panzer Force roster would be participating, but this time would be slightly different. Instead of Gumtune, Xenophium, and DJ Extras participating, DJ Extras would instead be sitting out of this one, and doing background instead of a composition. So, someone else had to fill up the space so that making 3 songs remains balanced, and this would end up being Takumi. Takumi is another Panzer Force member that hadn't contributed to any of the mixes directly, but has been in house as a composer for at least as long as Gumtune has, and they were definitely enough to fill the shoes of DJ Extros. So, the complete Panzer Force roster for this year was Extros, Gumtune, Xenophium, and Takumi, and as always, Core Venice also helped with background art. But it didn't end there for Gumtune. Gumtune was actually secretly in another team for the duration of the event, because being in one team wasn't enough to satisfy his hunger for composition. The team has a pretty cool origin story, with it beginning when Xenophian posted, we're making another BMS team, he wants to join on, and Gumtune responded almost instantly. They just needed another member. But they managed to get someone on board faster than I can say that sentence. This person was Nora2R, who they'd already met in the Panzer Force Comic Cat exhibit. Yup, apparently Panzer Force had their own place in Comic Cat, assumingly to distribute the set made Panzer Force original soundtrack. But anyways, this team was called Positive at Clip, and it was named this way because, quote, we wanted to make a positive impact on the world. Each member was then given an alias to hide under, and these names had a slight hint as to who's behind it. Each alias's first letter matched with the first letter of the actual artist. Gumtune was Generous at Clip, Xenophium was XTC at Clip, and Nora2R was Noble at Clip. And from there, they went under the theme of a team just trying to have fun. A team that met for some drinks and made each song completely shit-faced. That translated pretty cleanly into each song in the team's discography, with Nora2R making Night Without a Name, a surprisingly decent sounding hardcore song all things considered. Xenophium making X909, a Shrant song that's definitely a Shrant song, and Gumtune making LSD. Yeah, a breakbeat song that's a complete mess for the sake of being a complete mess. This was still received pretty positively in the community, and it wasn't long before people started to become suspicious and start asking questions. Funnily enough, despite that, they managed to keep their identities hidden until they announced it on Twitter. Honestly, a really cool side quest, and you can tell from what Gumtune wrote that there was a lot of passion that went into it, which makes it all the more better. Back to the main topic though, Panzer Force also came out with their three songs, sometime in between Positive at Clip dropped. Takumi released a remix of Snowfalls in the Night City, which if you remember is a song by Gumtune from the fifth mix. Xenophium released a remix of a song originally by Takumi called Holy Doll, 
and just when it seemed like they were doing a swapsies, Gumtune comes in with his own original song, Ko Naru Senrits, The Solidarity Melody. As you can tell, this shares a lot of similarity with his previous Happy Maria in terms of instrumentality. So, you'd expect it to use the Witch's Slave moniker, but remember how the alias is only meant to be for Yumi Neko arrangement? That's not the case here, and it's likely that Gumtu just wanted to show off his newfound style. And show off he did, with brilliant sounding hardcore kicks, a haunting atmosphere, and an infectious melody. This definitely turned some heads in the BMS scene, though impressions suffered slightly because it felt like the BMS chart was flat and not taking full advantage of the brilliant composition. Even Gumtune himself acknowledged this, saying it was likely because he also had to balance this with the production of LED in positive ad clips side of things. Still though, compared to previous years, he blew his past performances out of the water. In fact, all of Panzer Force did. The lowest score in this year's team would have been the second highest score in the last year's one. As a result of this, Panzer Force would end up placing 23rd out of 95 teams this year, with each member's song placing 43rd, 58th, and 168th respectively. Panzer Force was really starting to make it to the big leagues now, huh? And a lot of it was thanks to Gumtune and its rapid evolution in music. Remember that this is technically only his second year actively doing BMS composition, and third year composing in general. So much has happened already, and 2010 could be considered Gumtune's breakthrough year, but he was just getting started. Wait. It's not over yet. See, 2010 was a bit of a weird year for the BMS of Fighters. For the first and only time in the event's history, an after party of sorts called the BMS of Fighters Outer Field Brawl was held. Why? Because the organizer felt like it. This followed the exact same format as BMS of Fighters, but with a few extras. If you feel like it, you can register three or more songs, and if you feel like it, you can betray. Now what does that mean? Well, pre-registration for teams was also abolished for this event, and because of that, you actually put the team you're submitting to by yourself when you were registering the work. In other words, this could mean, hypothetically, you could join up with some other composers for the after party, you say you're going to submit for their team, and then completely betray them by submitting to another team last minute. Fortunately, this is more hilarious than it was a big move, because the competition didn't count points either. To sum up, it's a mini, uncompetitive BMS of fighters that gave composers more freedom, and was for anyone who somehow didn't manage to participate in the main event, or for some reason, wanted to submit more BMS. Gumtune was part of the latter crowd. At first, he didn't even know this was happening, but somehow, Xenophium found out about it, and ended up becoming super enthusiastic about it, which convinced Gumtune to join in. And man, do we owe Xenophium a big one? Who would have thought that what seemed like a much calmer and smaller event would end up giving birth to one of River Games' most popular songs to date? You guessed it. Submitting to Team... Uh... That, alongside Xenophium and Daisan, this was the birth of the original version of Furioso Melodia. Let's not be around the bush here. The song, and perhaps another from Arkea, is likely the only reason many of you watching know who Gumtun is in the first place, and is definitely what many consider to be the personification of the witch's slave. It's pretty easy to see why. Because, yes, pretty much everything about this style and genre is the same as his previous witch's slave songs, but what took this to the next level was how insanely infectious the melody is. It's beautiful, it's catchy, and it's downright sinister sounding, with everything from the instrument used to the tuning being just right and again, very reminiscent of Umi Neko. In the Read Me for Furiosa Melodia, there's an entire backstory as to how he came up with it. He was the type to leave things to the last minute, but this time, he wanted to do things as soon as possible. But when he tried to, he had no ideas, so he just went to sleep. But when he was at work, he thought of a musical phrase that sounded good in his head, but unfortunately ended up forgetting it when he got home. This would happen one or two more times before, one day, when he finally remembered it at home. He almost forgot it again, because he got distracted browsing the internet, but in an attempt to remember, he pressed a random key on his door keyboard, and thankfully, that key was the beginning of the phrase he was trying so hard to remember. He played the phrase, switched it to a harpsichord lead, and from there, he was in the moods to complete a legend. What makes this even funnier, is that Gumtune knew he created a banger. He's saying in the same readme, Ijire nai. Konna kiai no haita BMS. Ijire nai. Fun facts, but this doesn't seem to have any direct reference to Umineko, yet despite that he called himself Witch's Slave for this, because he had Umineko was very close to the concept of the song. Confirms what I said earlier. It wouldn't be a long time after the event when people would actually begin to pick up on Furiosa Melodia, but this was a sign that he had found a sound that he enjoyed making. He found a sound that he was passionate about, and although he wasn't super versatile, he was damn good at what he did. 2011. 
This was a less active year than previous, rightfully so considering the work he put in. He released two BMS in early 2011, including a remix of a song called Artificial Integrity and Unfictionium, with them being trans and intellectual respectively. It seems he was back to experimenting a bit, and this would continue on to the next event he would participate in, which was the BMS that can be enjoyed in less than one minute event. The rules were self-explanatory, all you had to do was create a BMS that was under a minute, and players can upvote or recommend your song through a ballot system, which gives you one point. Here come to produce Jumping Missile, a happy hardcore song which was on the cusp of being over the limit at 59.6 seconds. I can imagine he removed a single note or something at the end to pat it down. Other than that though, not too much happened both on Gumtoon's front and Panzer Force's front. Besides the fifth mix going public sometime that year, and Panzer Force merging with Stoic Sounds, which was pretty much ran by extras anyways. That is, until the BMS Fighters 2011 came around. Pretty cool that despite the fact that the BMS Fighters is pretty much the same thing every year, there's always some wildly different thing happening in the actual venue. This year is a pretty good example of that. As you can see, Panzer Force is here for the 4th BMS Fighters in a row. Notice anything unusual though? We have DJ Extros, Xenophium, Takumi, and Koa Venno on the team, but we're missing someone. That's right, Gumtune was absent. Where was he? Well, just like last year, he decided to go undercover using an alias that was completely unknown to the audience, no hints or anything this time, and revealing himself last minute. Funnily enough, this team was also one of the strangest teams that I've ever seen in the BMS of Fighters. A team that was entirely composed of Sayaka Miki, a character from the anime Puella Magi Madoka Magica, telling the story of someone who traded her soul and humanity for the sake of others, only to pay the ultimate price, as her ideologies were pit against the consequences of her own desires. Puella Magi is a show that had me in disbelief, because I generally didn't believe in anime about magic girls would land in one of my favourite animes of all time. And as bad as it sounds, watching Sayaka's fall to despair was a big reason for it resonating with me so much. It seems that Team Sayaka and Miki also felt the same way, and in some ways this is even more poetic since this BMS of Fighters was on the same year Puella Magi aired. Now, this team was huge, having what looks like 15 people, and the only way to distinguish between them was to look at the close bracket text next to their names. The phrases in the brackets could be completely random, or they could be quotes that came directly from Sayaka and Miki in the show. As you can imagine, this team was of great interest during registration, and it would only be a matter of time before the songs, and subsequently the composers themselves, were revealed. We had Maisie Mermaid by NNN, which also had vocals by another Sayaka and Miki, Maybe Hitler von Zeckendorf, but I can't find any record of them online. We also had SCCCQ by Luz, who you may recognize if you play Forky seriously, because this is the creator of Volcanic. Then we had Sayaka Miki vs Sayaka Miki, or Gumtoon vs Kosato to create Squad Tatrice. I can't play the song in this video, but if you haven't heard it already, please do go listen to it. It completely remixes the theme of Saika into some hard, melodic renaissance. And well, let's just say that if Saika Miki herself were to listen to this, preferably without this prick, she'd be happy that something like this was made for her. The song and background art was the effort of six people, with Gumtu being the main person in charge of the song and the title, which actually stems from Saika's special move in the Puella Magi PSP game. The Honto Baka Saika Miki was also put in charge of the background art. It does have an amateur feel to it, but it was done last minute according to them. And it does its job well enough. This song carried the team, gaining over 105,000 points total and placing 27th out of all 372 songs. And as a result, Sayaka Miki's final placement was 32nd, coincidentally just behind Team Panzerforce. Speaking of Team Panzerforce, the members of the team have risen to quite a reputable status in BMS, considering they were originally just a small team that represented their activity in Stepmania. But just as quick as Panzer Force rose, they would fall. Because sometime in 2012, the Panzer Force website vanished, just like that, and was seemingly disbanded. This didn't come as a particularly huge surprise, considering some of the problems with work and staff they had in the past, but this had to have been a huge deal for everyone involved, including Gumtune. And the worst part is that when I say vanished, I really mean vanished without a trace, or without letting anyone know in advance. Realistically, the only person that's capable of making something like that happen is the one in charge of Panzer Force in the first place, Extros. And it could have been a sign that something had happened to him. This led to Gumtune being really worried about what happened, since he also seemed to be inactive on the internet in general. It genuinely seemed for a second like Gumtune would never see Extros again. That is until one day, in August of 2012. You see, there were plans for a BMS LAN meeting on the 12th, where you can bring in your own BMS files to show off, and participate in competitions where you could possibly win Kirby's 20th anniversary collection for the Wii. <laughs> Generally, just to meet up for members of the community to drink and have some fun. And by complete chance, supposedly under disguise, 
Exos attended the event. From here, they would meet, and Exos and Gumtoon remained in touch. According to Gumtoon, Exos seemed to be in a state of deep thought, and simply couldn't take making BMS anymore. But despite this, he still looked around from time to time, checking Gumtoon's and other Panzer Force members' Twitter. His period of inactivity would halt when Gumtoon made a simple proposal. Let's make Teresa's a BMS. If you don't know, this is considered the boss song of the Panzer Force 5th mix, and one that x and Gumtoon worked on together, to give one final commemoration to the Panzer Force on its way out. Come the BMS Fighters 2012, Gumtoon, Xenophium, x and Takami would join forces for all time's sake on the Stoic Sound, which, yeah, technically was still a thing, and that brought us the release of Pandora, Diamond, Gipsophila, and of course, Turiaz. All the details I just discussed were actually outlined in the readme of the file, which these days is pretty difficult to find. And after this BMS of Fighters, all the members would end up going their separate ways. Extros and some of the other members primarily continued production in Stoic Sound, and the others did their own thing, including Gumtoon. But soon, Gumtoon would also soon follow the suits of Panzer Force with his own music. His website stopped being updated even before the BMS of Fighters 2012, and in 2013, the website was updated with a saddening announcement. It read, I don't think this site will be updated much. I stopped calling this name, and now I'm a Bemani player. I still like BMS, so I may come back sometime. Not only was Gumtoon gonna stop music indefinitely, but the costs to maintain his websites were too high to maintain, so he was left with no choice but to take it down eventually. Fortunately, before he'd leave, he would do one final goodbye by releasing what he dubbed at the time the Gumtoon EP. This would be a collection of songs come to made in the past, remastered and extended to bring them to a reimagined level, and it would also include remixes from other artists. This was a free internet album released in February of 2014, and with it came remastered classics, like a remix of Squad to Ice, an amazing version of Snowfalls in the Night City, and the version of Furiosa Melodia that we all know and love today. And after that, that was it. After that release, Gumtoon's website was shut down, and Gumtoon would be inactive retired from composition. But, there was soon a small flicker in the flame that died out. In January of 2015, after a year of absence, Gumtin returned with a new BMS called Tactics Analyst. Now it should be made clear that he was still effectively retired, as he says here, but he just wanted to make BMS on a whim. Funnily enough, he continued to create BMS semi-actively, with his next release being in July and then August, and before he knew it, he was back again in the BMS of Fighters, Ultimate this time, where he released Daraku no Sono, or A Legal Paradise, under Witcher's Slave. Hell, he even took part in an album by Luze, that same guy that was in the Saika Mickey team, in an album called Alchemistoria. This was an album with two sides to it, telling the stories of the rise and fall of two countries, and for what seems like the darker side, side Asar, Gumtoon composed the absolute causality of prosperity, the causality melody, almost as a throwback to the solidarity melody. Personally, one of my favourites from Gumtoon, and he wasn't even in his Witch's Slave moniker this time, though it does sound a lot like he should be. By 2016, he was pretty much fully back in the scene actively making BMS, though this was mainly outside of events and were far and few between. Though, in 2017, he would end up returning again to the BMS fighters. 2017 was a special year actually, because it saw the return of people that I'm sure you're very familiar with by now. That's right, Extros, Xenophium, and Gumtoon reunited and joined forces one final time to revive Team Panzer Force for the BMS of Fighters. The competition was very fierce this year. This was the same year that Leaf and Silent Room dominated with their works, and a bunch of other legendary stuff came out. But this was also a year placements didn't really matter. It was just three old friends getting together one last time to do what they do best. That was the last scene of Xenophium and Extros in BMS. Gumtoon would follow suit shortly after, because Go Back to Your Roots of 2018 would be the final event Gumtoon participates in. Here, he created a song that translates to Chain, and his last message was, It's neither a high impact song, nor a cool song, but I've done what I wanted to do in the last 10 years. And with that, his chain to BMS was broken. And he was free. That didn't mean it was the end though. For instance, he would still end up contributing a couple of songs to Archaea, with the most known one being Tripola Bewitching. This is another fan favourite from Gumtoon, whose melody takes a lot of inspiration from Furiosa Melodia, 
In fact, in terms of production, it feels a lot like a modern reimagining of Furiosa Melodia. And because of its very high BPM and sometimes trippy arc patterns, this song was one of the hardest Future 9s when it was added in version 1.5, but became one of the easiest Future 10s further down the line in version 3. He also remastered and contributed Illegal Paradise from the Buffy 2015 shortly after this released, but that was about it. After this, there was little activity from Gumtune, and in 2021, he took down all of his music platforms and announced his retirement on Twitter. After over a decade of composition, Gumtune was no more. A lot of people like to drag on Gumtune because they say a lot of his music sound the same and he should try switching it up. I don't entirely disagree because as you can probably tell, I love seeing how artists evolve over time. But at the same time, Gumtune was good at what he did. He loved what he did. And there's still thousands of people out there that listen to his music, including myself, that treasure each track from him despite that. So on behalf of all those people, thank you for your music Gumtune. Thank you Panzerforce and anyone who was involved in the story of the Witcher's Slave, you will never be forgotten. That being said, be sure to support whatever they may do next, and if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and tell me who you want to see next. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in a bit.